This is Tyler with GP Knives, and I'm here with Jim McNair of Kershaw, and we're going to go over the new 2021 releases. So, Jim, first up, uh, I'm going to hit you up and ask, what is your pocket carry today? So today, actually, I, I have the ZT0707 in my pocket, nice. and that's kind of become a go-to for me, especially being left-handed. I, I like the... As, as ugly as it is to reverse the clip, I, this one works pretty well for me. Um, so it tends to be between that and uh, lately I've been carrying one of the new composite dividends. Oh, very cool. Depends on that, the day. That is my daily carry today. I got awesome. the M390 dividend. It's great EDC. Yeah, we, we like that one. It's kind of slim and easy to carry. Kind of leakish, honestly. Yeah. That's what we, we've said that a lot. It's sort of a modern take on the leak. Got a lot of cool new stuff in the Kershaw lineup. First up is the the 2090 capsule. This is a this is a really neat little knife. So this is a what I'm calling a manual out the front, and it works kind of like a utility knife. You you press the button down and you slide the blade, and when you get to the, the open position, the the button pops up and locks it. Um, and it's it's just a fun, um, easy to carry. Um, it has a little keychain loop on it, so if you want to put that on your keys, you can. Um, it does have, it has a pocket clip as well. And one nice thing is being left-handed because it's a symmetrical design. It really, you can carry it either way. You don't have to flip the pocket clip and that's good because it doesn't, it's a, it's a single position. Um, but even for me being left-handed, it's really easy to kind of index it in my hand. You can feel because of the groove in the front and it opens right up. So this was a collaboration piece with Yen Zanso. Um, and it's been a really fun one. Um, it's just a little over a two inch blade or might be even a little under. And we have an anodized blue button. We have a molded, I'd call it a back spacer, but it goes all the way around. So it's got a spacer. And then we have molded glass filled nylon scales on either side. And in spite of that, it's, it's nice and rigid and comfortable. It doesn't feel floppy. And yeah, it's just a neat little knife. On that, are the internals stainless? They are, yeah. So we have, we have two stainless steel liners in, inside of it. And then... They are skinned with a with a glass filled nylon on the nice. front and the back, and that's a single edge, correct? It is single edge. Yeah, it's it's got a, it's got a really deep false edge here, but it is not sharp, and it is a single edge knife to keep it legal in fifty states. And what's the uh, MSRP on that? Uh, the MSRP on this is forty nine ninety nine, and I you know I, I misspoke before. This is the this is the eleven ninety. So uh, yeah, eleven ninety capsule. So designed by Jens Anso. So next up, why don't we talk about the bracket? So the bracket is kind of fitting in with um, some other knives we've done recently. This is a really cool new cleaver style design. Um, it's a little bigger. So it, it has a smaller brother in our lineup that we've, that we've done previously and it's, it's done really well. We've done a couple of variations on it. So this is now, oh, there Need we go. Static. The static, there we are. So this is a little bigger knife. This is a, this is closer to a three and a half inch blade. Um, and it has that same kind of cleaver profile. It's got a few thoughtful details. Um, we have thumb jimping here and we also have jimping for your fingertip up here. So if you want to do any detail work, having that, that down downward point makes it really easy to do detailed cutting and, and work with it. So as much as the cleaver blade, maybe something that's kind of currently popular and dare I say trendy, it is actually a functional, useful profile, and we have a nice, wide, flat grind. Um, the blade is not obnoxiously thick, so it actually it's a great slicer. I mean, all things said and done, it really is a useful, handy knife to have. Uh, it's yeah. very comfortable. I have fairly large hands, and I can get a full grip on it. Uh, we have a we have a reversible deep carry pocket clip. Uh, we have a steel frame lock on the back handle. Uh, we have an eight CR blade. And we have an MSRP of sixty four ninety nine on this one. And they're on the front. Is that just an aesthetic piece at the pivot? It is. It's 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 a cool kind of faux bolster. I'd, I'd yeah. say it's, a, it's kind of an overlay. Nice. It gives it that bolstered look, but a little more a little more artistic. I thought it was interesting that that knife is bigger than than the static, the smaller yeah. knife, but it's not even a half ounce heavier. Yeah, it makes a big difference having that G10 front scale. I'm always amazed whenever we make a knife all steel and then we make a G10 one, how big of a difference that makes. Oh, yeah. 
So that's that's pretty it's pretty remarkable. I'm glad you pointed that out. I always like a knife that's got a good weight to edge ratio. And I love the front jimping. You see that a lot on hunting knives, but not so much on EDC. And it really is very functional. Yeah, it makes it makes a big difference for me. I can really feel it. And especially if this was wet or uh, cutting something that was maybe even greasy. Yeah. Uh, it just gives you something to kind of hold on to there. Cutting packages so you're not ripping in the whatever's inside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I always I always dread that. Okay. Highball XL. So the highball is something that we introduced last year. Um, and we decided to make a slightly larger version of it. So the original one was meant to be kind of a classy knife, um, all steel construction, um, relatively thin, again, narrow this way and this way. So it carries really easily. And this is a little different because it's not a flipper. It, it, it is running on ball bearing, so it's nice and smooth. And it is actually, um, it feels great. Uh, I actually, I remember when we prototyped these, we were a little concerned using ball bearings on a non-flipper knife because it, it opens and closes really fast, really slick. But we tested it and we really liked it. We tried a few with um, with bronze washers when we were making prototypes. And mm -hmm. we really fell in love with the way this feels. It's just so smooth. And, you know, it's, it's just something you don't necessarily expect that opens quite that quickly for for a non-flipper knife, for something that, in this case, doesn't even have a thumb stud. It has a, it has a really deep machined groove in the blade. And that gives you a nice, just sharp enough edge to get your thumb in there and get good purchase. Yeah. Um, this is also up, upgraded with a, with a D2 blade. Um, we have a bead blast finish on pretty much the whole knife. And then we have a cool um, PVD blue on our pivot mm -hmm. and also on our, our, our screw. And then we have this, uh, this really neat little, uh, this really neat little piece in here that, serves as an over travel stop. And again, it's meant to give you a bit of a pad for your fingers to sit on. So again, when you're, when you're opening and closing the knife, you're less likely to have your fingers sit on the lock bar and, and close it and lock it up. You have somewhere to kind of rest your fingers as you open and close. And if I look a bit awkward, I'm left-handed. So bear with me here. Um, so yeah, so that is the, the highball two. Again, we have some really nice jimping on the back of that blade. Uh, it gives you a whole range of places to put your finger if you're going to do more detailed work with it. And yeah, and that has an MSRP of $84.99. So that is the Highball 2. Yeah, I like the fuller opening because there's nothing getting in the way of your cut. So you can cut straight through, you know, whatever cardboard or yeah. you're cutting food and there's no thumb stud or disc or anything to get in the way of what you're cutting. Absolutely. And I really like the way this kind of knife carries because there, again, you don't have a thumb stud catching on your pants. It just slides in and out of your pocket really nicely. Mm -hmm. um, sa sa similarly, you would have a flip with a flipper knife, but in this case where you'd normally have a thumb stud, you have that nice clean profile that just pockets so easily. Yeah. Nice dress carry. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see. Next up, why don't we talk about um, two knives that, they may look a little familiar to some of you, and that would be, um, excuse me, I'm trying to get them both here. We have the Turismo, which is our littler one. Mm -hmm. and we have the Collateral, which is the bigger one. So in full, in full disclosure, we released these two knives a few years ago, and they kind of never showed up. And to be perfectly honest, what happened with those is they, they used to feature a different opening mechanism, and the factory really struggled with that. And we really like the designs, and so we ended up retooling them. We changed the collateral a bit more. It has a bit more of an aggressive blade shape. Mm -hmm. Handle is very similar. Um, but instead now we have a very minimal flipper that hides away when the knife is open. And I really like this. It, it, it gives you a little more room on the handle. Um, you don't have the flipper in the front. So while you give up that sort of blade guard effect, it gives you more room for your fingers. And so it makes it really easy and comfortable to hold. Um, we have some nice thumb jimping again on on the ramp of the of the the blade there. Uh, speed safe assisted opening. Uh, in this case, we have a D2 blade, and we have steel handles again with that that fun kind of exposed backspacer style, and a carbon fiber inlay hiding the pivot. And then on the back side again, we have our our pocket clip, which is reversible, non deep carry. 
and a nice satin finish on that D2 blade. And so for this one, we have an MSRP of $71.99. And actually we have the same MSRP for our little guy. So our little guy would be the Turismo. So again, the same kind of thing where we have that cool little hidden flipper. And surprisingly for being so small, it's got a good grip. It opens really nicely and really, really um, with authority. We have contoured steel handles with a black oxide finish on them. So they're a little hard to see on the camera, but they have a really nice rounded contour to them. A reversible deep carry pocket clip, um, backspacer with kind of a honeycomb texture on it, gives you a little bit of grip on it. And nice, nice uh, groove in the blade with that slot. And then again, that, that fun little hidden flipper that just makes it relatively slim and small profile, but again, opens really nicely with that leaf shaped blade. So we have both of these as, I mean, they, they don't really look like family, but they, they work very similarly and they both have the same MSRP of $71.99. So that is the collateral and the Turismo. Those are speed safe with KVT. Is that correct? They are. You're right. Thank you for pointing that out. And that makes them, they just, they just open so, so nicely having that combination of the KVT bearings and the speed safe. I know some people will complain, uh, the, the speed safe, we'd rather have a manual knife, but I, I think you have to feel how nice these are when they open. It, it's really a very smooth fluid motion. It feels almost, yeah, I, you just kind of one of those, you just have to hold them. It, it really makes a difference in my mind. Really yeah. like the way that opens with that combination of features. So yeah, collateral and the Turismo. So if we, if we go to the elephant in the room a little more literally, we have the Strata XL and the Strata. And <laughs> it's a little hard to see on screen. These knives are pretty big. They are, they are, they are dare I say, gonzo. Um, so the, the small one, if we can call it that, has a four and a quarter inch blade. And the, the XL has a five and a half inch blade. These are very big. But there's something really cool about these, and it, it blows my mind to this day, is that these are really big knives, but they're relatively slim, and they're relatively narrow, which means they actually carry really nicely. So you have a single position deep carry pocket clip. It kind of works with the curve of the handle. So lefties like me may be a little disappointed, but they actually, being a relatively curvy knife, they still carry pretty well in the left pocket as well. Um, we have this really cool aluminum inlay with a, it's, it's a copper looking finish. And we have that on the backside as well as, as an over travel stop. Really cool style of the frame lock. Uh, G10 front handle. These both have D2 blades. They're both manual action running on KVT ball bearings. Nice big stout up oh, stop pin. You can see it on the backside. And, and man, you know, for, being such a huge blade, they open really nicely. Again, because that blade is relatively slim. It's got a real high flat mm -hmm. grind. They slice really nicely. I've been carrying one of these uh, off and on, and I really like them, particularly this four and a quarter inch size. But the funny thing is, I guess it depends on what, what brand of jeans you wear. But I mean, I, my, my Levi's and my Wranglers, the, even the big knife, the, the big five and a half inch knife, I can pretty much get that to the bottom of my pocket. Yeah. Uh, it's remarkable. I can't believe how well the, like the one that really I should be shouting about is this one. Cause the five and a half inch blade knife fits remarkably well and carries well. And it's really not all that heavy for how big it is. I mean, it's, I think there are other knives that are heavier. It's remarkable. So the strata XL and the strata and these are both D2 blades, bead blast finishes. Again, they both have that cool aluminum inlay in the handles, give them some real style. Um, running on KVT ball bearing washers. And we have a price of $119.99 for, for the XL and $99.99, that kind of sweet spot for the, for the Strata. So just really cool, really big. A <laughs> lot, lot of bang for your buck. You just feel kind of cool just... I love a, a large knife that carries much smaller than you think it should. Exactly. And that's kind of the, if there was a shtick to these, that's what it is. It, it, they're big 
and they carry, I mean, I am not a big knife guy these days. I'm really not. I, I carry a dividend. I carry relatively small things and they carry really well. I didn't yeah. find it was any kind of a burden to carry, particularly this one. And this guy is doable as well. This is something kind of different for us. This is our what we're calling our Atom series. And so these are these are actually a um, a composite knife. So these are like a glass filled nylon. Um, they're really fun. They're they're really relatively cheap. Um, they are surprisingly rigid for what they are. And yeah, they're just a, a really neat thing. So um, we have the little guy here, which is called the Inverse. It's kind of a a little maybe like a little Roman Gladius inspiration on that. And then we have the Arise, which is a bit more, obviously more of a more of a uh, a dagger inspiration, almost Fairbairn Sykesy, but not quite. Mm -hmm. uh, I, excuse me, I, I, I'm misspeaking, but it's very daggerish. Um, and then 15.99 and 14.99 MSRP. So really, oh, wow. you'll probably see these on the shelf for in the neighborhood of ten, twelve dollars. And they're they're really just a lot of fun. Um, they work well as a as a um, as as a letter opener, um, they're just they're a neat thing. Um, they do have some steel inserts in them. Um, this one, these got these these look like screws. They're actually more like a barbell. They're molded in, so they're not going to go through a metal detector. We're not going to be irresponsible with them. But um, this one has steel inlays, um, and we have a little little bail on the end with a square um, ring on there. Yep. So I mean. There's lots of different things you can do with these. They're they're really neat and they're really inexpensive. Um, so that's the Atom series, and and again we have the we have the uh, the Inverse, and we have the Arise. Moving on to something kind of in that same fixed blade genre. I'm gonna have to unwrap it here a bit, but this is the brace. So the brace is another cool little knife. Um, it's something we haven't really done in a while. It's it's a neck knife, and I really like the thought that went into this one. Um, so we have a reversible sheath, which personally for me as in a neck knife, I think is a really nice feature. Um, it means you don't have to really think about it. It just, it goes in either way, whichever way you happen to be holding it, it goes in, it latches up securely. It's designed that it works the same on either side. Um, we have a nice 550 cord lanyard, a little adjuster. So you can, if you want to put it on your neck, you can make it whatever length you want it to be really easily. It's really, it's really secure, but moves very well glass filled nylon sheath and it has double detent tabs on either side. You do have these little holes in here as well. So if you wanted to take this lanyard and either cut it up or take it off and lash it to something, you can do that. And the other thing that's remarkable about this knife is we forget, you know, sometimes you think, Oh, it's a, a neck knife and it goes under your shirt and it's a self-defense thing. This is a great outdoors knife. So when you talk to people that get into the REI guys that go and they, they want to, they want to get something that's super, super light. Every every ounce, every gram matters. This really fits in well with it. This knife is so light. It's again, it, you, I wish I could hand it to you through the camera and just let you feel that there's nothing to it. It's it's really actually very slim stock. Yeah. Um, again, we're not trying to be super overbuilt. It's a two inch blade. It'll do most of the things you need to do with a knife with that little small blade, but it doesn't have to be huge. It is hollow ground. It has glass filled nylon scales. Um, you could even take those off if you wanted to save a little bit, but it's rather comfortable with them. I, I think it works pretty well. It's about yeah. a three finger grip, so it's it's not like you're it's not like there's nothing to hold on to. So it fits really nicely in the hand. Even this even this hole in the front that engages the detent gives you a spot to stick your thumb, hmm. uh, and a little bit of jimping on the on the spine of the blade there. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, just, you know, for those people who like a, a little fixed blade, something easy to carry, relatively inexpensive, uh, we have an MSRP on this one of $34.99. So, again, quite reasonable. And, yeah, I mean, for its size, it's just remarkable. The weight is really what gets me on this one. Moving along to something a little bit different from that, we have the end game. This is just a cool knife. EDC category. Um, it's got a lot of clever, cool things going on in the way in the way we have the overlays interlacing into the handle. We have a glass filled nylon insert here, and then an overlay here as well. And on the front, it's really smooth. It's got really nice action. It's a it's manual action with our KVT ball bearing washers again. Uh, cool blade profile, 
nice belly to it. A uh, little over three and a quarter inches on that blade length. And again, a nice full, even for a larger hand, a nice full grip. A reversible pocket clip, uh, stainless steel frame lock construction, actually really on mainly stainless steel construction overall. Um, injection molded backspacer. And this one is also upgraded with a D2 blade. So being a little bit more of a fancy knife, we upgraded that blade to the D2. Um, the MSRP on this one is $99.99. So again, they'll get discounted quite a bit from there, but um, just a neat, comfortable, relatively slim EDC piece. So that is the end game. So then moving on to something just a little bigger, uh, we have the Cannonball. This one is, is uh, speed safe. It's got a big D2 blade, it's nice and wide, beefy knife. Again, we have that sort of bolster-esque inlay in the front. The rest of the handle is, the rest of the handle is a, a, is a uh, PVD coated steel. A reversible deep carry pocket clip, kind of a wide short one on this one, so a little different, a little more discreet. Um, and just that nice big belly drop point blade. Um, so again, we have black wash finish and yeah, uh, speed safe action with a frame lock. And on this one, an MSRP of $79.99. That's really a pretty good deal with a D2 blade. So we're pretty pleased with that knife. And it's, it's a lot of bang for your buck. Nice, big, again, comfortable, easily a full grip. And yeah, $79.99 for that one. Looks like it has a nice thin blade on there as well. It does, yeah. And that's kind of what we've been going for as a, as a theme in general, is it a nice wide slicing blade that isn't overly thick. Mm -hmm. uh, to keep the weight down and to keep the the cutting ability up. One more that's a, a bit different. And, you know, it took me a minute to wrap my head around this one when we first started working on it, but it's such a cool knife. So this is the platform. You can't even see it because I'm covering it. But um, So this is actually a, a, a double detent slip joint knife. If you can call double detent slip joint. I know there's been some discussion on that, but it's a non-locking folder. Mm-hmm. Um, it has a cool, you know, I'd, I'd call it almost a semi-worn, eh, it's not a worn cliff, sheep's foot. Mm -hmm. kind of blade. It's got a little bit of curvature to the edge, but it definitely has a low tip. Again, so really nice, really good for, for detail cutting, small work, opening boxes, a lot of stuff you do with a knife on a daily basis. Uh, we have a cool kind of a topographical pattern in the, in the injection molded front scale. But the real magic of this knife is on the back. So on the back side, side we have a, a full set of nail clippers. Now, I know you might say a grooming knife, but the neat thing about this is that these are actually a really nice, effective clip clipper. And so they work for more than just cutting fingernails. They're really nice for cutting little plastic tags. Uh, you, could cut a, a, you could cut a zip tie with this. Uh, a lot of mm -hmm. people use them for cutting fishing line. It's actually very common usage is, is using it for monofilament fishing line. There's a lot of different things you can do with this. It's like I... We, I mean, I, again, I'm, I guess I'm dating the video a little bit, we, you know, having been through Christmas recently and my kids' birthdays are foolishly near the end of the year. Um, I've spent a lot of time cutting those little plastic ties with, that hold the doll's leg in and things like that. And sometimes you're worried about uh, my daughter's going to be terrified when I slice the leg on the toy horse that I'm trying to get out of here. And there's something to be said for having something like this, having a little nipper where you could get little plastic ties and little, little miniature zip ties and little, little little bits of rope, little bits of string that they sometimes will tie things into packaging. So there's a lot of uses for this. And it's, it's really something that I feel like you kind of need to explain. It's, it's not just a nail clipper and it is actually a pretty effective, I won't cut my nails on, on camera. That would get weird, but it is a really effective little tool. And we spent a lot of time making sure that this was a functional, good nipper and it works for lots of different things. I mean, you could sit here and chew up a credit card if you wanted to just, Depends on what you want to do. It does have a nail file in here as well and a little pick as well. So, I mean, it does have the grooming implements. You could clean your nails with this if you want, if you wanted to avoid using the tip. Um, and it all holds itself in there nicely and it really holds it in well. It's not like it's going to pop open in your pocket. But so kind of gentlemanly with, with the, uh, with the, uh, the non-locking feature, but it's a really smooth, just comfortable to open mechanism. And it's a really nice knife. So this is the platform. Um, 
And this one has an 8CR13 blade and an MSRP of $59.99. So nice. again, a lot of cool things going on for that price. I like the, uh, the hollow grind and I've definitely used uh, nail clips for zip ties. Very effective. It's one of those things where it's like, I, I remember we started looking at nail clippers uh, to give a little bit of an aside. I've spent years cutting my nails with fingernail with, with scissors and things kind of stupidly. And we, we got some nail clippers for the, the manicure set that we sell now. And I, I ended up with a set on my desk and I didn't realize once you have them, you actually use them for more often. <laughs> I'm less of a savage. Actually, my nails look a little better and you find other uses for them. And so it's, this is one of those odd things where I really want to implore people like, check it out, give it a shot because I wouldn't have necessarily said, Oh, I want to carry a manicure knife, but this is a really handy little tool and it just opens up really easily. And once you always have it with you, I think people will be surprised how many uses you find for a little, a little nipper like this. Yeah. But anyway, that's the platform. And again, an MSRP of $59.99 on this one. One more that I think is really cool. Um, this is, I'm, I'm mixing up my names now. There we go. This is the drivetrain. So we've done a rescue. We still do a rescue knife actually. Um, and this is meant to be a little bit of an upgraded one. Um, so this has, it has a speed safe opening, full size blade, um, comfortable full size grip on it. Again, this is, this is really meant to be a rescue knife. So we're looking for something that you can hold on to. Well, you're not going to be slipping on it. So we have a full size grip. Uh, we have a pocket clip on it if you do want to carry it, and some people will. Um, and then in this case, we also have a, I'm trying to get it in front of the light so you can see it, a uh, carbide glass breaker. And then finally, the thing I'm, I, I like the most about this knife that I think is the coolest is that we have, on a, a lot of times these things will open 180 degrees, and it's, it's a long throw, and it's kind of a, a big motion. And this one only opens that far. And that's all it takes. It exposes your, your seat belt cutter, or if you want to use it for cutting cord, things like that, it works as well. Um, but it's real simple. It locks, and then you just press the liner inside of here with, in this opening with your thumb and close it right up. And it's hard to show, but because this is kind of a deep recess, it's really easy. Even it, it's kind of, I mean, again, I'm, I'm kind of backwards and using my, my offhand in trying to show it in the camera. But it's real easy and intuitive to get your thumb in there and use it. So it just opens up and it's a short motion. So again, if you were in an emergency situation, say you were stuck in your car, if you can get this in your hand, once it's there, it takes nothing to open that and it locks in place securely. And when you're done, it's real easy to close it up. Very nice. So that's the drivetrain. Um, again, really neat knife, a lot of thought went into the mechanism and an MSR. Oh, and I'm sorry, it, it, it should have a, it has an upgraded blade of D2 steel and an MSRP of $79.99. Do you have a favorite out of those? I'm curious, one that kind of caught your eye the most? I mean, again, the Strata immediately caught my eye. Um, it really, yeah, it really <laughs> reminds me of a lot of what you'd call a peasant knife. You know, it's a design that it's got a modern look, but the lines of it, the blade, the handle, those are knives you could find in almost any region of the world. And there's a reason they've been around for so long. Yeah. And, you know, I, I forgot to mention this before. This this did have a strong inspiration behind it. It was inspired by the Navaja style knives, which yeah. are exactly what you're talking about. They're they're very common regional piece. Yep. Uh, they, you see them in Spain, but I believe you see them elsewhere as well. Yeah, they go by a different name in a lot of places, yeah. but the Navaja definitely, I mean, I saw it and I immediately knew what I was looking at. I'm glad you pointed that out because that's that's something that I neglected to, to say. And they really are just, they're kind of hard to ignore. They're just, it's like a big personality. I mean, when you have a five and a half inch blade, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. it's kind of, you know, it reminds me of like when I hand people like Camp 10, something yeah. about a machete, people just kind of giggle. And this is just that big knife that you smile at and you, you just, you smile kind of stupidly when you hold it. Cause it's just so big and so cool. Yeah. And so it's, it's, it's hard to ignore. It's just, yeah, but it's great. Cause you know, you've got a lot of cutting edge. You've got a thin blade that's going to slice well. 
And it's all in a package that's thin and light enough that if you want to carry a five plus inch blade, you can do it. Thanks for the time. I really appreciate it. It's been an exciting year and we, I know it's been a, a tough year and everybody, but we've been trying to keep full steam ahead and just get some cool stuff out to you. I really am excited to see all the new stuff, some great stuff in the Kershaw and ZT lineup. And uh, I'm glad that you could join us, Jim, and show us all the cool stuff. Thank you for your time and have a great day. Yeah, you too. If you like what you've seen today and you'd like to see more, follow us on social media via the links in the description. Subscribe to our channel and like the video below. And follow us for updates on all new products and releases.